Hello, hello, hello. What's up? What's really good? What's crack a lacking? It's your boy Agostino. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show, episode number one, two, three. Go, let's get it. Back in the sector again. Today is a very special episode. Well, a very mini special episode prior to the longer, stronger episode later on tonight. But I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts with um uh dear listeners with the whole uh six nine situation that's kind of transpired over the last couple of days i've been watching it with um eager eyes or with bated breath or with a sense of shock um shock not so much at the punishment but shock at how much you know um the contrast in the you know in life events when you're dedicated to living life on the streets as they say um, as I'm, I'm sure most of you are aware, six nine, the Mexican kid with the rainbow coloured hair, has unfortunately been arrested uh, by the FBI under racketeering charges, which you know um, racketeering relates to organised crime. That's the way that they can prosecute you as a group for crimes involving violence, involving drugs, involving guns. You know all that nice, uh, pretty stuff that girls like when they're skipping in the playground. So yeah, him and his friends, um, even, though, even though he tried to distance himself from his friends in the last couple of weeks, tried to clean up his image, he went to the breakfast club wearing glasses, um, he spoke about how much um, money he was making, blah de blah 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 it still didn't help, because in the end, the feds came in and they did a swoop, or did a sweep, unfortunately. Um, and it's a very strange, it's a very um, surreal experience to watch this in real time, right? I think it's kind of similar, in a, not kind of similar, but... It has some sort of there's some linkings or towards this. Some this, I have the same sort of feelings like um what happened to X. Because with X, I was a big fan of him, all right, of course. Um, but I was also very aware that he was such a an aggressive um kind of you know he's he looked not to speak ill of the dead but a, a tad unhinged person, and he was putting so much negative or I don't know um weird energy out there that it just felt as if like he was gonna have to repay that price one way or the other um i'm not someone that b believes too much in karma but in terms of just the energies that you're putting out into the world you know being ultra aggressive uh wanting to fight everyone under the sun making enemies out of people that you don't need to make enemies out of with the whole drake episode and his mum, it kind of just felt like you know it was a ticking time bomb waiting to happen and unfortunately, it happened a lot sooner than we expected, you know, um, with the whole uh, botched robbery that turned into a, mur a homicide or a murder. But I think even the most staunchest XX fan can't really say that they were absolutely shocked that he died. Maybe he, maybe how he died in that fashion, but unfortunately, it was just one of those things where one of our leading lights in the scene or in the hip-hop community, someone that a lot of us we kind of looked looked to as being, you know, the next big star. You know, he had a real big potential. He was supremely talented. Um, he could kind of, you know, he, he shocked and surprised everyone when he dropped the album and it sounded nothing like his singles that he put out previously. He was so confident in his artistic expression. But unfortunately, he's gone and um, he was taken from us way too soon. And you get the same sort of feeling, although I'm sure there's not there's, there's not as much goodwill towards Six Nine as it was towards XX. But you get the same sort of feeling with Six Nine. You know, um, he had his own little lane that he was kind of occupying. I saw some people online comment um commenting and saying that he was the you know this era's DMX, which I don't really agree with. But you know, say la vie, I guess shouting and screaming over a record and being aggressive and having street connections is probably the closest that they kind of align. Um, I think sonically. And I think just in terms of the content of their music and um, just a standing in hip-hop, I don't think you can compare them at all. But, you know, c'est la vie. But he's still somebody, you know, who offered a, an interesting contrast to what was kind of currently going on. You know, he was like, a, an, he was like a, a street version of a SoundCloud rapper, right? An aggressive version of a SoundCloud rapper. Like what, what SoundCloud rap would sound like? Basically, he sounded like a, what Casanova would sound like if he was a SoundCloud rapper, right? Like, you know, ultra ultra street fuck bars, but, you know, with a little bit of a, a playful twist towards them. But the most interesting part of this whole story, ah, uh, most interesting part of this whole, well, I, let, I let the phone ring in the background, but the most interesting part of this whole story that makes it very, very interesting is that looking at the case, and reading what's happened with, with 6 9 and seeing how quickly he got picked up, it seems as if the criminal activity, the illegal business that he was taking part in, kind of ramped up the more famous he became. 
which is kind of counterintuitive, right? You don't necessarily see that happening. What you generally see in hip hop community or in hip hop in general is that artists come into the scene with a kind of, you know, checkered past. Maybe they were selling drugs, maybe they were scamming or whatever it may be, hustling on the side, right? And then you do that in order to pay for your studio time. You do that in order to pay for your tour, in order to burn your CDs, to make your merch, whatever you, just to get on, right? You do that stuff to get on. Then once you start getting a bit of a, you start building momentum and you start getting sponsorships or you start getting paid off your music or you start getting more uh, uh, club gigs or whatever it means, walkthroughs, whatever, whatever it may be, you kind of leave that side, you kind of leave the illegal activities aside or you tell your friends to pick it up for you and you just kind of take a cut from it. That's, you know, I don't, I'm not saying anyone does that, but I would assume that also some people would do, right? You kind of like, you know, the more famous you got, you want to, you'd see the increase, you see that kind of limelight, you know, um, hovering above your head and you wouldn't want to, you know, um, bring any untoward attention towards yourself and your friends who also are partaking in that legal activities, right? So it's kind of a, it's kind of a self-preservation for you and for your friends. But with the 6 9 situation, it seems to know he's done it the opposite way, yeah, right? He kind of started off a bit slow in gang culture and then kind of got heavily uh, or more involved as he got famous, which is weird. But then if you look at it, if you kind of analyze it a bit closely and you look at his antics to, that got him famous, right? Um, he's kind of, you know, doing anything and everything in order to kind of gain viral attention. Uh, he was sort of like a, a less a, a less kind of lunatic version of bunk right he was out there kind of doing what he was doing on social media some of it was funny some of it was annoying but whatever he was doing um, some of it was antagonizing uh going around you know he went to chicago he went to la but all of it was kind of to garner kind of eyes onto his brand so maybe if you're six nine and your friends are take, partaking in illegal activities even though it's going to be dangerous to your brand and it's going to hurt your pocket you're so far involved now and you can't really separate between what is good attention and what is bad attention that like you just you just want any attention because it, it's going to add to your street cred because if you offer if you're familiar with the 69 story you also know that on social or on forums and stuff there was talk of people thinking that he wasn't actually involved in um he wasn't actually involved in the streets as much as he pretended he was that he paid everyone that was around him that he didn't really earn his stripes so he didn't shoot a gun they didn't rob it whatever it may be right everyone had their kind of doubts about as to what uh, doubts as to his gangster right that's why that's where the kind of famous phrase of his came when uh when he said uh test my gangster right i think to la guys or i think maybe to chicago i don't know what it was but whatever it was he's trying to challenge people to test his gangster but I, so i guess maybe in the back of his head when his friends are partaking in this illegal activities when they're robbing guys when they're i don't know um shooting um gunshots into arenas and whatever it may be he wants to take part because obviously it's going to add more stripes to his reputation right because in a weird way if he ends up getting off this charge which seems unlikely but if he does end up getting off it it's only going to add to his um a law as an artist right as being this like hood dude that got sweet by the feds they took all his money um all his friends were in prison he didn't snitch blah 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 it's just going to add to his mystique which is unfortunate really but I think overall it does go to show as most people are aware that your friends around you are the most important thing in order to kind of save you from that culture especially if when you're coming up when you're like on the come up because it needs to be said that yes he was involved in street culture stuff but all it needed to all it needed was one or two friends in his group even guys that were actually still involved in the streets to tell him you know what this ain't for you I've read so many stories. I'm sure you have got, you guys have too, of countless kind of, you know, former gangsters who've always said the kind of same thing or other artists said the same thing where they're on the come up, they were hustling on the streets and somebody, an, an OG usually from the streets would kind of pull them to one side and say, you know what, um, this thing ain't really for you. I'm hearing that you're popping off on, on Instagram, you're doing really good on SoundCloud. I think you should just stick to that. We'll handle the street stuff. But it takes some OG to, to let you know, look, you don't have to prove yourself to me. You don't have to uh, earn your stripes here. I am I still rate you. I still think you're amazing. For what, whatever you decide to do, you still got our... Um, you still got our... Um, <clears throat> you st I can still vouch for you. It's quote unquote, right? But 6 9 de didn't really have that, it seems like. It seems like everyone in his group was kind of enabling his reckless behavior. And unfortunately, it led to the position that we're in now where he's facing, I don't know, is it 32 to life in prison or some shit like that? So, all in all, it's unlikely he's going to get out, um, considering the charges, right? Usually when the FBI take people in, it's most it's usually because they've been, you know, 
They've had a case building for a long, long time. Many, 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 many hours of surveillance. <laughs> and they decided now's a good time to kind of, you know, whack them with all the charges under the sun. The only way it might work is if somehow he decides to flip on his co on his co defendants. But considering how much um how much value he placed in his gangster image, it would be really, really unfortunate. It would be a really way really sad way to end the story if he decides to snitch. But considering this, the era that we're in now, where no one really cares about ghostwriters, where no one really cares if you get beaten up, um hip hop isn't really in that same sort of realm anymore, right? Back in the day in hip hop, if 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 someone had a video of you getting beaten up, right? Someone had a view of you getting world starred, your career was over. If someone found out that you didn't write your own raps, your career was kind of over. But nowadays, that's not really the kind of thing that happens anymore, right? It's sort of like, you know, people kind of don't really care as much. Maybe because they don't think it's real. Maybe because they, they, they know it's all kind of WWE. I don't know. Whatever it may be, no one really cares that much. So there's an argument to be had that if he snitches, will people actually care? Will it hurt his brand? And maybe not, right? Because, um, Maybe the kids that were fucking with him anyway, especially the 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 younger kids who just want to support him because it annoys the older the older generation, right? Because the older generation didn't necessarily like his reckless abandonment of life and how he treated the scene and how he went about um um kind of garnering attention and fame. Um, you know, the OGs in the scene didn't really like that approach from him, but the kids fucked with it heavy, obviously mostly because it annoyed older people. But if somehow he decides that's a good idea to kind of snitch on his friends and he kind of gets off scot-free because i think snitching on your friends to get a couple of years i'm not sure again being that position is something i don't really envy but he might weigh up and think you know if he can get away with snitching and get five years instead of 32 or life and come out and no one cares and pick up his career but i don't know as a fan i'm not i'm not too sure how that would make me feel personally but again I think overall, this won't be a lesson learned, I don't think, for the kids that uh, do want to get attention at all costs. I think some, some of those kids just, I think they think it's worth the squeeze. You know, all the trouble, all the anxiety, all the heart, all the trouble, all the potential police um, nonsense and getting, getting investigated and whatever it may be. I think it's worth the squeeze for some of these kids. I think it is. You know, you you kind of do a massive cash grab. You come in, you you know, you blow up the scene for a year. You drop Gummo. Everyone's talking about it. You drop an album. Everyone's talking about it. You have another album coming out with Kanye, Nicki, and all these big people. I think it's worth the squeeze for some kids. I think they say, you know what? I'd rather go as a legend than die as a than kind of die in anonymity, right? And be a nobody. I think a lot of them are like that. They'd rather do thirty two years in prison, everyone knowing their name, as a as opposed to being some some random kid in the middle of Nebraska. Which is sad, really, to think, isn't it? That some kids are thinking that way. But I honestly do think that's the case. I don't think a lot of them think of hip-hop as a long... Don't think of it in terms of longevity yet, just yet. Because obviously a lot of them don't really have any connection with people like Jay-Z or P. Diddy or Pharrell and stuff. They don't really have a connection to them um, per se. I think the moment the likes of J. Cole, Kendrick... Um, Drake get a little bit older, right? And they get in towards the kind of like, you know, the the early 40s years of age and they start to kind of wind down the musical output and start to venture into other things, but they still maintain their, their kind of um, their standard of living. I think then a lot of kids will start to see, oh, wow, this actually be an actual career. But I think for the most part, kids see it as a young man's game where you only have a short window to kind of make an impact. And go and go out being a quote unquote legend, which is you know again, which is sad, but it's I think it's kind of the case that's happening now. It'll be, just, it'll be interesting again to see how this case transpires over the next few days. You've already seen kind of a lot of his close friends on, on especially in media, people like academics already distancing themselves from um, six nine. You know, talking about breaking news of six nine as if like he's some guy that he'd never spoke to or he was never friends with, which is really cringe. There was another video of, I watched of Everyday Struggle where Wayno kind of berates 6 9 for not being uh, a better friend. Uh, no, berates uh, academics for not being a better friend to 6 9 And 6 9 and, and academics effectively says, you know, it's not my business. I'm not getting involved. Which is, you know, a flipping, you know, such a spineless response from somebody who, you know, made a healthy living off of reporting about his nonsense and you know, concocting plans of how to gain variety and all that sort of nonsense. And here he is now, the guy gets in real trouble. He dis Before that, anyway, 
you, you, you definitely did see a kind of a separating between the both of them. They kind of started to go in there. They were both different lanes. Ak tried to pull away. 6 9 was pulling away from Ak. And then now that 6 9 has all these federal charges against him, uh, Academics is now reporting it from a distance as if he was never uh, personally involved, which is, you know, again, pitiful, spineless stuff, but you don't expect anything else from a dude who kind of, you know, uh, caters to the lowest form, lowest common denominator in the hip hop community, which is unfortunate again. But you know, I guess he serves a purpose in some sense of the word. But yeah, six nine is currently, I think, in, is in prison right now, isn't it? General population awaiting trial, or awaiting his first couple of hearings. I think he's been denied bail already, so not looking good. But maybe things will change. We'll see how it develops in the next few uh days and whatever it may be and i will come back again on the stream or on the podcast later on today with a longer episode talking about some interesting things that i've stumbled upon on the interwebs and i'll see you guys again very very soon thanks for tuning in this has been the excellent zinc show episode number one two three little mini 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 episode see you again on the other side peace